Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Nahmaduhu wa nusalli wa nusallimu ala rasulihi al-kareem Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi Wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanan ila yawm al-deen Faqad akala Allahu tabaraka wa ta'ala fa al-Qur'an al-kareem Wa farqan al-hamid a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Wa aqimu salata wa atu zakata wa raka'u ma'u raqi'in وعن وابسة ابن معبد قال رأى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رجلا يصلي خلف الصف وحده فأمره أن يعيد الصلاة وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يزال قوم يتأخرون عن الصف الأول حتى يؤخرهم الله في النار صدق الله مولانا العظيم وسرق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكدين والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا يسر ولا تعسر وتم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح رب زدني علما اللهم صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم. My dear respected brothers and elders, we continue with the rules of salah in jamaah, and different rules we will mention inshallah until we will speak about the masbuk, the one who comes late for salah, and idrak al farida, the finding of the far salah when somebody is already performing salah. Last day we mentioned about a person performing salah with one muqtadi and how he should stand and thereafter we mentioned about if other muqtadis come to join that jama'ah how is it they are going to join this jama'ah, how does the imam behave, how does the followers behave we mentioned that the person should try to pull the person who is performing salah already and they will stand to the back of the imam and uh, Inshallah, that would be a good way. If it is not suitable for them to come back, then the Imam could also step forward. We continue with the ruling. It is the duty of the Imam to straighten the safs. That is, he should stop the people from standing unevenly and he should order them to stand straight. They should stand next to each other and not leave any gaps within the saf itself. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, when he would stand for the salah, the companions mentioned that he used to straighten our rows so accurately as if he meant to straighten the rows with the help of the use of arrows till he found that we had learned how to straighten them. And one day he came out and he was about to commence the prayer by saying Allahu Akbar. He saw a person's chest protruding from the rose. He said, Servants of Allah, Ibad Allah, let us awunna sufufakum, awlu yu khalifan Allah bainak wujuhikum. Either you straighten your rose or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will set your faces opposite to one another. In other traditions, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, Sawu sufufakum, straighten your lines. Fa inna taswiyata sufufi min iqamati salah. Certainly, the straightening of the lines is part of the observance of the prayer. Different statements, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. He would mention to emphasize to the Sahabas that their lines should be straight. And this is why many a times we see the Imams, be it assistant Imam, Imam who is appointed in the masjid or somebody who is going to lead the Salah, they advise people that they should straighten the lines. Because Nabi alayhi salatu did mention that if we do not straighten the lines, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change the faces. Ay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can cause disunity amongst the believers. So therefore, salah being an important amal, the imam will ensure that the lines are straight. And if people are standing unevenly, they should have some type of order. Sometimes the masajid, they have lines on the carpet. Sometimes they will develop other methods whereby brothers stand side by side, hold one another, and then release one another with regards to the lines being straight. They should stand next to each other and not leave any gaps within the saf itself. They should stand next to each other and not leave any gaps in between. We have to understand, of course, that, oh, mashallah, the ulama of the past and the present have looked at all these ahadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we, when you look at people standing up in a line, it's not possible for every portion of their body to be touching the other portion. And the maqsad of the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned different st mentioning different statements about join your necks together, join your knees together, right? And the Sahaba is mentioning that we used to join our heels, our heels used to be glued together at the time of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is only a means of straightening the lines as the commentators of these traditions have mentioned and it is not like in the time of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam every portion of the person's body could have been touching with the other person's body and that is impossible if we stand up and we see if we try to do something like that it would, co it would cause a lot of movement so therefore what is necessary is the straightening of the line that is necessary and the other thing is that fill the gaps Saddu al khalal, saddu al khalal, saddu al khalal. Fill the gaps, right? And join between the shoulders. So when we join the shoulders, depending how broad a person's shoulder is, then of course we will have spaces in between, right? At our sides, etc. It's not possible, do we understand the point, inshallah? It's not possible that we touch every particular point. So therefore, as much as possible, when we come shoulder to shoulder, that would solve the issue and inshallah, it would not leave any gaps within the saf, saf, itself, within the saf it, itself, inshallah. Right? So we should join the sufuf, right? We are Muslim brothers and therefore, we should not feel a how that the, my brother next to me is like very close to me. This is, this is the, ma the method of salah, how Nabi alayhi salatu was salam had taught the companion so therefore we should not leave any gaps and there are two extremes one extreme is whereby some people now they're trying to join every portion of their body their heels their feet and then in salah itself they are making a lot of motions wherein salah is not made for all these different types of motions right moving the foot fixing the foot trying to touch the heel of another person right and when the person moves and gets up back they have to spread out again Right? So all these types of movements, salah is not for that. So that is one extreme which the, the, the jurists of the past have never ever mentioned that this is the mannerism of how we are to fill the gaps. But how we are to fill the gaps, they have mentioned that a person's foot should be, you know, four fingers apart a, at a comfortable stance that his, he will be standing in an upright manner, facing the holy Kaaba in a comfortable manner. Right? And mashallah, the people at the side should be close to him. The other extreme that we were speaking about is that sometimes people are just so far apart that you can actually walk in between them comfortably. And this should also not be the case. We should ensure that our Muslim brothers are close to us when we are performing salah. Fill the gaps. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, do not leave any gaps for the shaitan. It is makru. For a person to stand alone in a saf. Instead, in such a case, he should pull a person back who is standing in a saf in front of him and make him stand in line with him. But if there is a possibility that the person will disrupt his salah or take this unkindly, then he should not do this. There's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherein 
It mentioned about a man performing salah alone in the back line. And Nabi alayhi salatu was salam told him to repeat his salah. And uh, the scholars have mentioned, based upon that tradition, my dear respected brothers and elders, that it is not good and a person should not intentionally stand in a saf by himself. We are speaking about not one person alone along with the imam. That's not what is being spoken about. What is being spoken about, we are in a masjid or any other place. And now the first line is filled, the imam is in front. One person comes and he is the only one there. Now there are different rulings that has been mentioned as to how will this person comply with not being end, ending up in the in the dislike scenario that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam spoke against such a person my dear respected brothers and elders the fuqaha and the hanafi jurists have mentioned a person comes there is no space in the sufuf and he is the only one waiting there in behind he will wait according to the hanafi jurists he will wait and see if somebody else comes to join him if somebody else com comes to join him then it will be more appropriate for him to wait and then as long as he can find the imam in ruku as long as he can find the imam in ruku he will stand and wait to see if somebody is coming in so that he will not get into this dislike position of performing salah in a line alone that's scenario one if the person comes before the imam actually finishes his ruku then alhamdulillah alhamdulillah both of them stand there or more than one of them they perform enter into ruku with the imam and everything will be fine they will not end up in this 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 like situation that nabi alayhi salatu wasalam has mentioned about secondly is that if the person comes and he realizes that nobody else is coming the imam will eventually get up from his ruku now he has to go in ruku what can he do he can pull a person back who is standing in the saf in front of him and make him stand in line with him. And uh, it is mentioned in Fatawa Mahmudiyah, Mufti Mahmud, Nawar Allahu Marqadahu, he mentions that a person will pull an individual in a place that which is suitable. Of course, forming the sufuf right behind the, the imam is best. When we are going to start the lines, we start from the direction right behind the Imam. This is how Nabi wasalam, and his companions used to do it. When we are going to form the lines, we start from the Imam's side in whatever line going, extending out. So therefore, a person can pull the person from in front. Now yes, of course, the question comes about, but there will be a space there in front. Of course, there will be a space, but we are talking about bettering a situation that is there that the person has to deal with right a filling the gaps the people in front did that but just as how we are going to come up to a masbuk the person a late come up for salah and that person will actually have to change the tartib of his salah because he has come late a that is to handle the situation that he has come in he can he did not get takbiratul ula with the imam he missed his he missed certain portion of the salah so now he has to complete his salah but the maqsad is he has to complete his salah so likewise the person has come here he wants to perform it in such a manner that it is not dislike what does he do he can pull someone from the from the front and stand in the second line inshallah in such a manner now he will not be standing alone somebody will be performing salah with him in the line if however that's scenario two scenario three is if he realizes that look pulling someone from the front line people would not be aware of this ruling and it could cause them to break their salah as we have mentioned in the previous class you know they will start to utter words or they may not be aware of the law so therefore they will think that some strange person is doing some weird thing in salah right and it could create a problem then the third scenario is the person will stand alone in the second saf or in the saf which is he is standing there alone right so it's makru to stand alone in a saf 
However, if a person has to, as, as a last resort, then he will stand alone, inshallah. But if it is possible for him to wait for somebody to come and then join the salah, that is best. Or if he cannot do that and he can pull somebody from the front line, then that is also an option that he can do, inshallah. It is makru to stand in a new saf if there is place in the first saf. Once the saf is complete, then, o then only should one stand in a new saf. When we come into the masjid, and there are, la there are spaces in the first safs, eh? in the first saf, people should enter into the spaces of the first saf or the second saf as the case may be. We should not have the, the, the mentality or the habit whereby people are just forming lines in the behind and there are spaces in front. And all this has been adopted from the attitude and the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If a muqtadi is a woman or an immature girl, she should stand, stand behind the imam, irrespective of whether there is only one woman or several women. If there is a woman performing salah with an imam, then they must stand behind the imam. Even if it is a man's wife, even if it is a man's wife, according to the Hanafi jurist, the man is performing salah with his wife, she cannot stand up to the side of him. Because if she, there is a masla in the Hanafi fiqh known as muhadatul mar'ah, Becoming parallel to a woman When that occurs in salah They are performing the same salah The same takbir or tahrima Their salah will become invalid If they are standing side by side, by side Without any partition in between So therefore If a person is leading salah with a woman She must be in the back Whereby she does not touch him If even she is not side by side with him, but she touches him to the extent to t say subhanallah three times, then the, imam, the, the, the man's salah will become invalid. Right? So when we are performing salah with females, women must not be in a situation whereby they can touch the males. As we said, even if it is our wives, we can desire our wives, anyone, any woman, that can be desired. We cannot perform salah with them in such a manner that they, we are, they are touching us. They should be behind us, inshallah. Likewise, according to Hanafi Fiqh, in Haramain Sharifain, in Masjid al Nabawi and Masjid al Haram, there is no excuse on, in this particular regard. And Alhamdulillah, thumma, Alhamdulillah, by experience, we see that yes, sometimes the Hanafis might end up in an issue. In these particular places because sometimes how it was before now undergoing construction and they are trying to control the crowd a little more in 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 masjid al-haram in makkah but sometimes it used to be and it probably still may be that you are performing you are going to stand up the ikama is being called and a man pulls up right next to you or he puts his wife right next to you and he's standing on the other side in such a case yet still the Hanafis, it would not be permissible for us to perform our salah like this. And therefore, this is why people, the Hanafis, they, they start to move away and go in a better situation. Why? According to us, this is one of the reasons that causes a man's salah to become broken and the woman's salah will also become broken. So, if there are women performing salah, they should stand in the back. It is also mentioned that it is makruhun tahriman for a man to make imamat of women in a place where there is no other man or where there is no mahram female such as his wife, mother or sister, etc. If there is another man or mahram female, it will not be makru. If some people are in a room, they are in a gathering, in a mosque for example, and there, is, there are only two people there, uh, one man and one woman. It's not husband and wife. The imam is totally a stranger to this woman. 
it will be makroo for them to perform salah in a normal situation. So normally you would not you are normally you wouldn't get it in a in a in a masjid, right? But say for example a person goes home by an individual, right? Or probably he went to fix something by a put, a particular Muslim sister, and now the time for salah came, they wanted to perform salah. Dik, it is makruhun tahriman for two people like that to perform salah alone because they are strangers to one another. If there are other people who are considered mahram to this male, then there will be no dislike. Eh? He, can lead, he can perform salah, lead his wife in salah, he can lead his sister in salah, he can lead his mother in salah. Right? As a matter of fact, it is mentioned about Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. When he, when in his time, when he used to go to Masjid Nabawi and Salah had been fulfilled already, he would come back home and make a Jamaat with his wife. Aye? So we as males, it should not be our habit that we perform Salah in Jamaat with our wives at home and forget Salah in Jamaat in a Masjid. Salah in Jamaat in for the Masjid is emphasized, emphasized Sunnah according to the Ahnaf, Wajib according to some of them. So therefore, we should try our utmost best to perform salah in jama'ah, inshallah. But if for some reason or the other we could not find a salah in jama'ah, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam did go to his home and form a jama'ah with his family. Now, we will make mention about the performance of salah and somebody else comes with regards to loud salah and silent salah. Silent salah is very easy. If we are performing salah, dhuhr salah for example, and then somebody else comes and they join us in the salah, we are leading silent salah. At any rate, we do not have to recite loud kirat. Right? But if a person is offering the fard of fajr, maghrib or isha salah alone, and he is offering his salah silently. Then, all of a sudden, someone joins him and now follows him while he is in his salah. Then, he has two alternatives. One, this person makes the intention in his heart that he is now becoming the imam so that his salah may be offered with jama'ah. Two, he does not make intention but continues thinking to himself that although this person has come and stood beside me, I am still offering my salah alone. In the first case, the moment he makes his intention, it will be wajim for him to start reciting in a loud voice. If he had already recited a part of Surah Al-Fatiha or any other surah silently, he should start reciting them aloud the moment he makes his intention. This is because it is wajib upon the Imam to make the kirat in a loud voice for the Fajr, Maghrib and Isha Salahs. As for the case, as for the second case, it is not wajib to make the kirat in a loud voice and even the Salah of the Muqtadi will remain valid. This is because it is not necessary for the Imam to make an intention of imamat in order for his salah to be valid. Mention has been made here, my dear respected brothers and elders. If we are performing salah, let's make it simple inshallah. We are performing salah, maghrib salah, we are performing salah, we are concentrating on what we are doing. Let's take for example, somebody came to our right side or even in the back. They did not know that it is best to come to the right side. They stood directly behind us and they performed Maghrib Salah. After we said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, we looked around and then realized that somebody was behind us and they were performing Salah along with us. Alhamdulillah, thumma, alhamdulillah, as long as it's the Maghrib Salah, the fard of the Maghrib that we were performing, then they are in order, right? If it was that it's Sunnah Salah that we are, was performing, then that means if they thought that they were following us in Maghrib Salah, they will have to pray over their Salah. So we did not even know that they were there. No problem. The, their following of us is okay. 
we did not need to have intention to lead them in the salah. But it was essential upon the person who is following to have intention to follow an imam. Right? So, there, there was even no question about if we needed to raise our voice or not in, for the Maghrib Salah because we did not even know. Mawlana Shafadi Tanbi Rahmatullahi Alayhi and Bahishti Ziwar, he says here that now if the person does not have intention for the person of leading Salah, he can also remain silently, remain silent with his Maghrib Salah throughout. Right? Remain with his Maghrib Salah throughout. If, however, he changes his intention to perform the Maghrib Salah in Jama'ah. He realizes that one person has come here or he realizes that somebody tapped him on the shoulder and he realized that somebody said Allahu Akbar behind. So it, it's, and he heard probably a few Allahu Akbars. So probably now a few people came and joined him from behind. It will now be essential upon him to start reciting loudly. Why? Because loud kirat to recite aloud in Maghrib Salah, Fajr Salah, and Isha Salah that is performed in Jama'ah is wajib. So this is why when he makes intention for leading of the Jama'ah, he will now have to recite in a loud voice. He will now have to recite in a loud voice. Even as Mawlana Shafali Tanbi Rahmatullahi Alayhi is mentioning here, even if he, did, he was in the middle of a surah, etc., he can continue in a loud voice. He can continue in a loud voice. We will now continue, inshallah, with that person who is known as a masbuk or a person who has missed some of the rakats with the imam. The, the masbuk is one who has missed a few rakats, one rakat with the imam, he should join the imam and offer whatever is left of his salah with the jama'ah. Once the imam completes his salah, the masbuk should stand up and complete the rakats which he has missed. Right? So, a mudrik, adraka yudriku means to find. A mudrik, according to the fiqh terminology, means a person who finds the salah in jama'ah in totality. From taqbiratul ula until the end. He's a mudrik, he found the salah in jama'ah. Now we are speaking about a masbuk. A one, a late comma of salah. He has missed a rakah of the salah. And therefore, when the imam completes his salah, he will have to complete that salah. What that person will do, he will come wherever the imam is, whatever position the imam is in, he should join the jama'ah. As a matter of fact, there, is a hadith, there are a hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that states, when you come into the salah and you find the imam in sajda, then you also go down in sajda. Sometimes people may have the habit or they may think, I have already missed the rakah, let me just leave it out. No, it is best to join the jama'ah. Our intention was to come and follow the jama'ah, so therefore we should do as we are actually joining the jama'ah. Other hadith, mashallah, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, he was in the salah, a sahabi came in, he did not yet join the sufuf, he stood up. And he said, Allahu Akbar, and joined the jama'ah. When Nabi alayhi salatu was salam asked him, why did you do that? He said, because I wanted to get the virtue of you in salah in jama'ah. So he said, Zadak Allahu hirsan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase you with regards to your yearning of obtaining rewards. Right? So the joining of the jama'ah, my dear respected brothers and elders, when we come for the salah in jama'ah, Never mind that that particular rakat, we are not going to get it with regards to it being counted 
if we miss the ruku in itself. Yet still, we can join the salah, join the jama'ah, whether the imam is in at tahiyat, sajda, whatever have you, inshallah. Right? So, we will join the jama'ah and make up afterwards for whatever rakats that we have missed. How this would be done, when we come to join the jama'ah, we must say Allahu Akbar. And a point to note, my dear respected brothers and elders, this is why the fuqaha have taken all these things in stages. First in the books of fiqh, it comes about taharat. Because Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, this is what he taught about purification. And with purification now, the different types of purification from the different types of anjas, and purities, now we will enter into the salah. When we enter into the salah, we have to know that which is compulsory in the salah, that which is wajib, that which is sunnah. So, we have learned that takbiru, takbiruha at tahlil wa taslimu, wa tahliluha, tahrimuha at takbir, wa tahliluha at taslim. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, tahrimuha, to enter into the hurmat, Making those things that were halal outside of salah, haram in salah is the saying of Allahu Akbar. So when we come into salah and we are running in salah, trying to catch the imam, not running, it's best not to run. Right? Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, Alaykum bis sakina. We should not run to the salah and trot to the salah. When we are coming, he said, Come calmly to the salah. Whatever has missed you, Inshallah, make it up. Whatever has missed you, make it up. But don't be, we should not be running for the salah. We say, Allahu Akbar, go down. But we cannot concentrate on what we are doing because we have to get our breath and our heart is pumping and racing and the blood is moving. So therefore, alaykum bis sakina. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said that have peace and tranquility. Come towards the salah with peace and tranquility. Naam. And thereafter now, whatever position the imam is in, we must say Allahu Akbar and we are in the standing position. Right? We must say Allahu Akbar and we are in the standing position. It is far to stand and recite Takbiratul Tahrima and thereafter to stand at least for duration long enough to say Subhanallah. Once and then one can go into ruku, right? So when we come, some people they say Allahu Akbar, and before they actually finish that Allahu Akbar, they are just ducking down. That should not be the case. We have to say Allahu Akbar in a standing position. Then let there be a pause at least the amount of time. We don't have to say fana if we are trying to get the imam there in ruku, right? But Allahu Akbar at least be in a standing position, then Allahu Akbar and go down. Right? Because if we say Allahu Akbar and we are actually closer to the lowering po bowing position, then our Allahu Akbar did not, was not said in Qiyam and we would not have started our salah. Right? So, therefore, to come and start the salah, remember we mentioned about Qiyam is fard and to say. Um, tahrima, that is also fard Allahu Akbar And using the words of Allahu Akbar According to the Hanafi jurist is wajib So therefore we say Allahu Akbar Pause and then Allahu Akbar And go and find the Imam in Ruku There is no rush If we miss the Ruku Then we have to make up that particular Raka But it is better that we are sure that we find the Raka Rather than we actually don't even start the Salah Rather than we don't actually start the salah, because in order to start the salah, it means we must get takbir or tahrima in the standing position. So, if Anyone finds the Imam in Ruku, 
then inshallah it will be that they have gotten that rakat. There's an ikhtilaf as to actually what is considered to be takbiratul ula. What, did, what does it mean that the person has found the first takbir? And different ikhtilafat, inshallah, as long as a person finds the imam in ruku, he would have gotten that rakah. If he does not find the imam in ruku in itself, then it means he did not find that rakah with the imam. He, as long as... Once the imam has completed the ruku and a person then joins the imam, he has missed a rakat and this is what is known as a masbuk. Such person will have to make up his salah. A person who has missed any rakat and joined the jama'ah, he should continue the salah with the imam till the end. Right? As we were saying, go on as usual, Allahu Akbar, continue till the end. Once the Imam turns to say the second salam, the masbuk should stand up and complete the missed number of rakats. Some scholars say, as long as we understand that the salah is going to be finished, as has been mentioned here, once the Imam turns to say the second salam, some scholars mention in their fatawa kitabs, as long after the Imam says the second salam. No big difference, inshallah, with regards to time. Alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah. Some scholars are of the opinion it's best to wait until the entire salah is finished. With regards to assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Some scholars are of the opinion that as soon as we know that the imam is going to complete his salah by saying salams, then there will also be no harm to stand up. So then, the person now will stand up and complete the missed number of rakats, whether it is one, two, three, or four, as the case may be. When a person is going to join the salah, he has already missed a rakat, or he is coming to join the salah, if he is in a position whereby the imam is not reciting kirat, then he can recite the thana. He can recite the thana there, right? And as well as, if he is a masbuk, when he is going to stand up, we will come to see here now, he will also recite the thana again. Right? So reciting the thana, when we now start the salah with the imam, we probably did not find him in when he now began. But then he recited Surah Al-Fatiha, said Amin, and he is an pause there, and we recited thana, there is no problem with that. If he is reciting Quran, it's not essential for us to recite thana. To recite the thana is sunnah. So, if the masbuk has missed only one rakat, he should stand up, read the thana, ta'awwad, and tasmiya. Recite Surah Al-Fatiha and another surah, and thereafter complete the salah. Recite thana, ta'awwad, and tasmiya. Just when the person stands to complete his salah, he will do as the first rakat of the salah is performed. A, he should first offer those rakats in which there is kirat, and then those that have no kirat. Let's say for example, Isha salah, the person missed one rakat with the imam. He got the second rakat with kirat, and then two, the last two without kirat. Now he is going to get up. He will perform one rakat with kirat. That's a straightforward case because he only missed one rakat. That is the first rakat. He will recite thana. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa tabaraka smuka wa ta'ala jadduka wa la ilaha ghayruk. Ta'awwad, a'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim Tasmiya. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. He will recite Surah Al Fatiha and another Surah. If now he missed more than one rakat with the Imam, he missed three rakats. He only got the last rakat with the Imam. He got the last rakat with the Imam, and that rakat was silent. When he stands up, he to himself will recite firstly two rakats with. First, thana, thana, ta'awwad tasmiya, surah al-fatiha, and another surah. In the second rakat, he will do the same. Not, we, uh, of course, we recite thana, ta'awwad tasmiya once. Then, 
Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, right? And, and in, in the other rakah. As for the rakats which he has offered with the Imam, he should sit for them accordingly. That is, after counting the rakats, he should make his first qada after the one that is second. He should make his last qada after his third rakat if the salah is a three rakat salah. For example, a person joined the jama'ah for dhuhr, which three rakats has already been completed, as we are mentioning. When the imam makes salams at the end of the salah, this person should stand up and offer the three rakats which he missed in the following manner. In the first rakat, he should recite Surah Al Fatiha, another surah. Then he should make his ruku and sajdas and sit down for his first qada because he only got one rakat with the imam. So, one rakat with the imam, he sat down. But this is not his first qada. First qada will be after two rakats. So he will stand up because he only got one rakat with the imam. He will stand up and then after his recitings, go down and sit. And he will sit for his first qada. Yes, of course, he sat in the last sitting with the imam. But that is not his last sitting because he's a masbuk. For those people who are mudrik, along with the imam, they have completed their first and second sitting. But this person is a masbuk. So his salah has slightly changed. He has to sit down because this rakah is regarded as his second rakat. After combining it with the rakah that he has offered with the imam. Right? So he got one with the imam and now this one is the second one. Thereafter he should offer his second rakat. It means the third rakat that he is going to perform. One with the imam, one by himself and now the other one. After the second rakat, he should not sit down. He would recite Surah Al-Fatiha and another surah. After, in the second rakat, he sat down for himself. He got up now, Allahu Akbar. He will recite Surah Al-Fatiha and another surah. Allahu Akbar, going ruku. And continue as normal and then he will stand up. He will stand up. And in the last rakah, he will recite Surah Al-Fatiha alone. In the last rakah, he will recite Surah Al-Fatiha alone. And in this last rakat here, he will sit down because this is actually his fourth rakat. Right? So, briefly again, a person will make up for the missed salah based upon the amount of rakats that they have missed. If a person missed one rakat, that is basically straightforward. The person will perform one rakat after he missed one rakat with kirat, surat al-fatiha and another surah. Straightforward, he will make up one rakat of surat al-fatiha and another surah. If he missed two rakats of surat al-fatiha and another surah, he will make up for two rakats of Surah Al-Fatiha and another Surah. If he miss three rakats, first two will be Surah Al-Fatiha and another Surah. And then he has to remember to sit for the first qa'da and the last qa'da. And if he miss all four rakats and he got the Imam in the last sitting, right? He got the Imam in the last sitting. Now that raises the point. How, until when can we join the Imam? Until when can we join the Imam? Until the Imam does not say As-Salamu. If we find the Imam and he is no, and we in sitting position, we said Allahu Akbar, stood up, sat down, and the Imam is now going to say As-Salamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah, we have found that Jama'ah. But if we did not find the Imam before that, and just as we were going to sit down, before we could actually sit down to find the imam in position, he said, Assalamu alaikum. We cannot join the imam. We did not find that imam in for salah in jama'ah. We will have to perform our salah individually. That is what it means.
right? We will have to perform our salah individually. So, uh, until any time before that, inshallah, we can find the Imam. Until before he says, Assalamu. Now, let's take for example, Maghrib Salah, three rakats. We miss the first rakat with the Imam. The second rakat, the Imam will sit. We join the Imam in the second rakat. We will sit also. The Imam will sit for the, the rakat after that. That will be our first sitting. And then we will get up to make one rakat extra. That one rakat we will do with kirat. Because the rakat we missed with the Imam did not have any kirat in it. Uh, sorry, it had kirat in it. Right? The rakat that we missed with the Imam, there was no there was kirat, sorry. The rakat we missed, there was kirat. So therefore we will recite kirat when we stand up to, to perform this one rakat we missed in the Maghrib Salah. Let's say for example, we missed two rakats of the Maghrib Salah. Right? Two rakats of the Maghrib Salah. We are standing with the Imam. He is not reciting any kirat loudly. So we know this is his last rakat. When he sits down, we will stand up. Recite Quran, Surah Al Fati, another surah. Then we will sit. This is our first sitting. Stand up and Surah Al Fatiha, another surah. And then we will sit down again. And that will be our last sitting. Of course, a person who is a masbuk, he cannot lead anybody else in salah. So there is no question of whether he is supposed to recite his kirat loudly or not. The person who is leading others in salah, the person who is a masbuk in salah, he will not be able to lead anybody else in the salah. He will complete his salah alone. Right? So, with these few rulings of the masbuk, inshallah, we will stop here and we will continue with anything in relation to the masbuk and another topic for the next session, inshallah. Jazakumullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.